Hello and welcome to Access Sportsnet Lakers, driven by your Southern California Honda dealers. I'm Chris McGee. We got Robert Ory, James Worthy, Mike Presnan, Allie Clifton's going to join us in a little bit. We got Trudell handling the postgame duties. The Lakers get an easy one on Halloween night for the first time this season. They're over 500 at four and three. Kind of built up a 28 point lead, fellas, and kind of cruised from there. Maybe for the fourth quarter. Defense has slipped a little bit, Rob, but outside of that, it was it was a dominant performance. Yeah, the second half was a really a, a cruise because, like the game of basketball, was a game of spurts, and the Rockets were surged back. But, but very fortunate for the Lakers, they would fight off that and surge back. You know, it was really close there for a second, and I was sitting there saying, "Oh no, not another uh, OKC thing." But mm -hmm. fortunately, you know, Vogel made some good timeouts decisions. They got refocused. They came back and put the pe pedal to the metal more. Yeah, I think they definitely remembered the, uh, the the OKC game, and I think they didn't want that to happen again. But I think overall, from the beginning, I think they're starting to connect defensively and know what their number one priority is, is on the defensive end. Um, Carmella, I mean, he's, he plays well at home, doesn't he? Uh, shooting the ball well, getting in the right spots, understanding where he's supposed to be. And I just think, you know, they're starting to, to play like they're supposed to be playing. I know the Rockets aren't, you know, one of the elite teams, but, you know, they need to practice against anybody other than themselves. And I think they're, you know, hopefully shaping up on that end. Yeah, two words, uh, definitely, lesson learned, okay? Mm -hmm. Based on what happened last week, they were up 26 in OKC. We all know what happened there. Today, they're up 24. And ideally, you know, they, they stay there. And LeBron doesn't have to play the fourth quarter or AD or Russ. You know, they, they face these guys again in two days. Maybe that's where you shoot for then, you know, maintain that 24-point lead. Bottom line, they still won the game. And, and Carmelo... I don't know what's more impressive, the five threes or the four block shots. Probably, probably the block shots. <laughs> because, yeah, he's not known as a defensive-minded player. But a great game all around again for Carmelo Anthony. All right, let's go back to Staples. Carmelo Anthony is with Mike Trudell. All right, Carmelo, before we talk about the shooting, four blocks, two steals for you tonight. First time you've done that since your rookie year, actually, in the game against LeBron. Uh, what's going on with all the deflections, man? Man, I'm just trying to stick to the schemes and just honestly just do what I'm supposed to do on the, on the defensive end um, within our schemes, be there, be in position where I'm supposed to be at. Uh, and just, you know, I'm getting, I'm starting to get more, more used to uh, just what we're trying to do in our schemes and where I'm at on the court, defensively more so than offensively. So today was one of those games we just, you know, we was doing it in, in, in a great fashion. Um, I, I think I did a great job of just being in position, being in spots. And I just want to build on that. We want to build on that defensively. I know you're staying in the moment, but you think about that 2003, like your rookie year, that's a long time ago, right? Do you remember that game against LeBron? Uh, no. You, you won. You won that one. There's a lot of games in between that. If that was the first game we played, then yeah, I, I remember that game. All right, fair enough. So uh, the shooting form, uh, Melo, just where are you getting your looks? How comfortable are you? Uh, what, are the, what are the keys to you uh, having that quick catch and shoot motion? Just, I'm just working on it. I stay in the gym. It's something that I've, I've always worked on. Um, you know, I'm, 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 it's easy for me to adapt to what's going on. Um, I'm, with, I'm the willingness of, of, of adapting. Um, and again, I said it earlier, um, you know, in the season, but the passion, the passion to want to be better, to want to be in the gym every day, getting better, uh, learning what I need to do. Uh, again, this is new for this is new for all of us playing with each other. So, the more reps that I can get, you know, I, I just got to stay sharp when my number is called because it's a long season, but I, I got to keep doing what I'm doing. Final thing for you, what do you think of the starting lineup with AD at the five? I know you guys have run through some of those groupings in practice. I like it. It's something that we're looking at. It's something that you know, throughout the course of the game, we've seen more of it. Uh, we started with that today, so ain't no telling with Frank. We don't we don't know what's going to happen. We just got to be ready for whatever we do. All right, man. Happy Halloween. Thank you. Same to you. All right, how about this? Carmelo Anthony, 25 minutes, 23 points, 8 of 14, 5 of 8 from 3, and what Brez was speaking of earlier, one of the more surprising stats, four blocks, and you heard Melo talking to Mike Trudell about that. Guys, check this out. He was 5 of 8 from 3. I know you guys talked about this in the pregame show. His 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 home and in, in away splits are, are are insane. He's 23 of 34 big game James from three at Staples Center. No wonder why the crowd loves him. Yeah, they love him. You know, less travel. You don't have to get on that airplane. Older veteran. No, I, I think you know just experience of knowing how to bounce back from a, a, a subpar game that he didn't like, and also like he said, getting used to, you know. Understanding the tendencies. Tonight was 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 an exceptional play of he said it, get into his spots, not rushing in, being patient, 
been in the right spot when LeBron, Westbrook, anybody's going downtown, he has some really nice shots. So I expect this of him most of the season. A veteran player, they know how to bounce around pretty good. Now for me, when I, when I watch Carmelo play, I always want to watch that first shot because he's such a guy, when he sees that first shot go down, mm -hmm. that means he's hot. Yeah. And if he shoots a great shot, that's what you want to see. And that first shot he took was no one near him. So it was an easy shot. He saw it go down, and I said, uh-oh, that's all he needs to keep keep going and going. He's like a microwave, so he's hot. When he's, when he's hot, he's one of the best shooters in the game. Yeah, so on the second day of free agency, the Lakers signed four players. Three young guys, you know, they, they agreed to terms with THT. Uh, they got Malik Monk, and they got Kendrick Nunn, and they also got Carmelo. Had, had you told me that Carmelo, of those four, would be the most impactful this quickly in the season, I would have said, you're out of your mind. Obviously, THT and none, a non-factor right now. They're not playing. But picking up Carmelo and seeing him do even more than he did in Portland. You know, he got his 14, 15 points a game up there. He's getting like 20 every other game down here. Just, just a great, great start for him in a Laker uni. It's interesting when, when, you know, Rob, we always joke about how you said that one night. Uh, listen, it, there's a big four. It's not just a big three. Um, and when, when he has nights like this, and he's had them now a few times, it takes a lot of pressure off of... LeBron and AD and Russ to kind of have to come up with all the offense, big game James. And it's nice to have that ball moving and, and find someone else like a Carmelo Anthony. Well, it's just like when LeBron is out, now we have Westbrook who can handle that, the rock and, and run the team. Carmelo is another one of those veteran players that when called upon, if, if a player's out or say if a player's in foul trouble, he can step up. He's done it just about everywhere he's gone. And he, you know, exemplified that tonight by knocking down some more threes, defense. I think the more minutes he gets out there, he can be one of those guys that if somebody's not around or somebody's injured or we need some quick buckets, he's a go-to guy. He's, he can probably start on a lot of teams in his league. And coming off this bench and be able to sit back and watch how the Lakers play, because sometimes the Lakers will play fast, sometimes they play slow. I think Carmelo is a, is a seasoned vet where he can sit and say, okay, this is what I need to do when I come in the game. And that's what I like about him coming off the bench. He's a very intelligent player. We don't talk about that enough. He can watch and analyze the game, say, okay, this is where I can get my shots. This is where I can help the team out. But I think he said it best. He's learning the defensive scheme a lot better. If you watch his rotations tonight, he was getting a foot in the lane. He was getting mm -hmm. back. He was being active. And that's what I wanted to say, because we know what he can do offensively, but what can you do defensively? I know the Rockets aren't a great team, but defensively tonight, the Lakers looked a lot sharper than they have the last couple games in terms of their rotations and, and their schemes. You heard Melo tell that to Mike Trudell. They turned the Rockets over 27 times for 32 points. That's a season high. Uh, also a season high in steals with 15 breaths. Yeah, really impressive on the perimeter. Uh, Avery Bradley, you know, a lot to do with that. Russ had a really nice game defensively, too. He was at uh, plus 26 the last I checked. Uh, you got to give these guys credit. I mean, this is a very young, uh, talented, but erratic Houston backcourt. Jalen Green, uh, two of seven tonight. I mean, you know, the Lakers really clamped down on him. He had 30 the other night. Um, Porter, again, you know, can, can get a little crazy sometimes on the court there, but the Lakers kind of bottled him up. Those two guys combined, eight for 20. You know, that, that's good defense by the Lakers, period, no matter how young uh, or old the backcourt might be that they're going up against. Rob, how much did you, you think it, it, it had to do with that starting lineup as well, a little more uh, attention to, to defense on the perimeter. You look at an Avery Bradley, you look at Baysmore kind of setting that tone. LeBron, Russ, and AD all kind of came out with that focus tonight. Yeah, if you look at what the Lake, I mean, what the Rockets put out there, it was a smaller lineup. Mm -hmm. It was a more active lineup. It was a lineup more conducive to the Lakers going. Uh, well, I want to say small because LeBron is still a big in my <laughs> eyes. But, you know, going small and they putting AD at the five. And the perimeter defense was nice, man. And I see why. The Lakers welcome Avery Bradley back with open arms because when he was pressuring Jalen Green, he was like, okay, yeah. rookie, let me show you what the NBA is about. about. He turned the ball over. He was able to start. Stick. And that's the thing that, that, that Avery Bradley, he can cause a lot of conflict on the outside when he plays the defense because when you have a guy like that playing that defense, that aggressive, it forces those guys to drive. And what you're going to do, you're going to drive mm -hmm. them to the shot blockers back there. So it's going to make it a lot easier for the guys, to funnel guys like that when Avery Bradley is up in the grill like that, force them to the baseline or to the sideline. No question. Uh, you know, Avery Bradley, you know, when none comes back, when Tucker comes back with his, you know, with his Wayne span, they're going to have some guards that can really create havoc. And that's the one thing about, uh, you know, Coach Vogel, the, the, the beauty of that is he has different 
scenario knows he, he can throw at you. If one guy's not having a, a good defensive, you know, game, he can come off the bench with somebody else, with, with uh, Bradley or somebody that, that can defend and disrupt. So, yeah, there's a lot of guys that can get the, 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 the job done. Reeves is another guy that can come in, very disruptive on the defensive end. So they got a lot of cards they can play depending on what the lineup is that, that worked for them. Yeah, keep in mind, Avery Bradley went through training camp and preseason with, with Golden State. He was cut by the Warriors towards the end of it. He's been with the Lakers for, what, 10 minutes, it feels yeah. like? He's already getting starting gigs, hitting big shots, and playing great defense. Yeah. All right, guys, well, let's get you to the highlights. We'll take you out to Staples Center. Halloween night. Cruz in that 28-point lead. Hold on to win by 10. Let's go back. Frank Vogel speaking with Mike in the media. Hey, Frank, just curious the thought process in the, with the small lineup tonight and how much that had to do with what you guys had decided versus Dwight's uh, unavailability and, and what you thought of the result. Yeah, no, we decided yesterday just, uh, you know, we've been talking about uh, certain points of the season to explore our roster flexibility and, um, you know, the way uh, – the way Houston plays, this just seemed like a, a good opportunity to look at just look at that. Um, I also liked uh, the way we we finished the fourth quarter uh, against Cleveland, having uh, Bays and Avery out there, uh, you know, guarding the other two teams' uh, best perimeter players and AD at the five. So uh, just something we want to look at as a starting group. Um, you know, one of those guys would be the backup center, either DJ or Dwight. Dwight being a scratch, uh, we used DJ. He was great, and um, you know, glad we got the win. And then, Frank, just what did you think of the defense the first three quarters in particular, and was there some evolution from what you've seen the previous few games? Yeah, huge growth uh, on the defensive side of the ball, not because of the lineup, uh, but because of our work. You know, we've been really hammering the details with these guys, uh, the areas, uh, you know, that we're, we've been failing. And, um, you know, we've had very productive film sessions, and, you know, they've been challenged. Uh, with things like containment and low man and, uh, you know, executing their coverages the right way um, and finishing possessions, you know, which we did a much better job hitting people, uh, very lax with our box outs the last few games, um, but all those areas were improved tonight. Frank, the, the three-point shooting of Carmelo has been obviously great uh, all seven games, really, but what did you make of his just total performance tonight and, and what he did for you guys defensively and, and what has he brought to this group kind of in all facets? Yeah, I, I'm, I didn't expect to, have, to see him have a, a defensive performance like he did tonight, and he was great. You know, I mean, uh, just you know, forget about the steals and, and um, you know, blocks and strips. He's always good with his hands, uh, but he was in the right position. And you know, he's when you watch him on tape coming into this year, like the effort's there. You know, what I mean, he, he plays hard on that side of the ball. Um, you know, we got to protect him in certain ways, and, and we're we're figuring that out and um, landing in some good spa good spots with that. And, uh, you know, we're asking him to, to do things within our system, like have low man collisions, uh, which he was great with tonight. You know, uh, he, he's willing to do all these things. He can do all these things. And, um, you know, when he's you know, providing that kind of performance on the defensive side of the ball with the way he's shooting it, uh, he's a huge part of our win tonight. Frank, to the eye test, it, it appears that like a handful of Mello's looks on any given night are wide open. Uh, how, how much is that a product of him you know, being able to read where the ball is and space, and how much is that the things that you guys are doing uh, to draw the defensive attention to the ball to allow him to be in those spots? Yeah, well, he knows, you know, he knows the spot, the right spots to be in, and um, you know, we, we we always try to put him on the backside when we're running certain action, uh, knowing that the defense is going to collapse, and and we want him to be him, him to be the recipient of those types of plays. So. It's a little bit of him, you know, finding windows, uh, you know, to get himself open. And, you know, uh, a lot of, you know, we got three guys that can really put pressure on the rim in, in Russ, Braun, and AD. Hey, Frank. Um, with LeBron's dunk and, you know, what we saw from Carmelo on both ends, it seemed like the guys were really having fun out there. Like, did you notice a different type of energy from the guys tonight? Most of the night. I, I think, look, when they lock into the defensive side of the ball, this group, um, at least this group the last few years, and, and then the new guys coming into our culture. When they do the little things, and you know the other team's struggling to score, and the ball's flying all over the place, and we're getting out in a transi transition, you know that's that's Laker basketball, you know, and that's when we're going to have the most fun. Um, you know, the ball didn't move as well in the second half, but um, you know, defensive stops the breaks, you know, defines our, our culture, and uh, that's a fun style to, to be in. The purple and gold. Yeah, I think they definitely remember the, uh, the the OKC game, and I think they 
didn't want that to happen again. But I think overall, from the beginning, I think they're starting to connect defensively and know what their number one priority is, is on the defensive end. Um, Carmella, I mean, he's, he plays well at home, doesn't he? Uh, shooting the ball well, getting in the right spots, understanding where he's supposed to be. And I just think, you know, they're starting to, to play like they're supposed to be playing. I know the Rockings aren't, you know, one of the elite teams, but, you know, they need to practice against anybody other than themselves. And I think they're, you know, hopefully shaping up on that end. Yeah, two words, uh, definitely, lesson learned, okay? Based on what happened last week, they were up 26 in OKC. We all know what happened there. Today, they're up 24. And ideally, you know, they, they stay there. And LeBron doesn't have to play the fourth quarter or AD or Russ. You know, they, they face these guys again in two days. Maybe that's what you shoot for then, you know, maintain that 24-point lead. Bottom line, they still won the game. And, and Carmelo, I don't know what's more impressive, the five threes or the four block shots. Probably, probably the block shots. <laughs> because, the blocks. Yeah, he's not known as a defensive-minded player. But a great game all around again for Carmelo Anthony. All right, let's go back to Staples. Carmelo Anthony is with Mike Trudell. All right, Carmelo, before we talk about the shooting, four blocks, two steals for you tonight. First time you've done that since your rookie year, actually, in a game against LeBron. Uh, what's going on with all the deflections, man? Man, I'm just trying to stick to the schemes and just honestly just do what I'm supposed to do on the, on the defensive end um, within our schemes, be there, be in position where I'm supposed to be at. Uh, and just, you know, I'm getting, I'm starting to get more, more used to uh, just what we're trying to do in our schemes and where I'm at on the court, defensively more so than offensively. So today was one of those games we just, you know, we was doing it in, in, in a great fashion. Um, I, I think I did a great job of just being in position, being in spots. And I just want to build on that. We want to build on that defensively. I know you're staying in the moment, but you think about that 2003, like your rookie year, that was a long time ago, right? Do you remember that game against LeBron? Uh, no. You, you won. You won that one. There's a lot of games in between that. If that was the first game we played, then yeah, I, I remember that game. All right, fair enough. So uh, the shooting form, uh, Melo, just where are you getting your looks? How comfortable are you? Uh, what, are, what are the keys to you uh, having that quick catch and shoot motion? Just, I'm just working on it. I stay in the gym. It's something that I've, I've always worked on. Um, you know, I'm, 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 it's easy for me to adapt to what's going on. Um, I'm, with, I'm the willingness of, of, of adapting. Um, and again, I said it earlier, um, you know, in the season, but the passion, the passion to want to be better, to want to be in the gym every day, getting better, uh, learning what I need to do. Uh, again, this is new for Ed, this is new for all of us playing with each other. So the more reps that I can get, you know, I, I just got to stay sharp when my number is called because it's a long season, but I, I got to keep doing what I'm doing. Final thing for you, what do you think of the starting lineup with AD at the five? I know you guys have run through some of those groupings in practice. I like it. It's something that we're looking at, something that, you know, throughout the course of the game we've seen more of it. Uh, we started with that today, so ain't no telling with Frank. We don't we don't know what's going to happen. We just got to be ready for whatever we do. All right, man. Happy Halloween. Thank you. Same to you. All right, how about this? Carmelo Anthony, 25 minutes, 23 points, 8 of 14, 5 of 8 from 3, and what Brez was speaking of earlier, one of the more surprising stats, four blocks, and you heard Melo talking to Mike Trudell about that. Guys, check this out. He was 5 of 8 from 3. I know you guys talked about this in the pregame show. His 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 home and in, in away splits are, are are insane. He's 23 of 34 big game James from three at Staples Center. No wonder why the crowd loves him. Yeah, they love him. You know, less travel. You don't have to get on that airplane. Older veteran. No, I, I think you know just experience of knowing how to bounce back from a, a, a subpar game that he didn't like, and also like he said, getting used to, you know understanding the tendencies tonight was 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 an exceptional play of he said it get into his spots not rushing in because that's sort of the area of the ball that you captain um, from your perspective tonight what was so much better than it had been prior to this um, our communication was really good tonight um, our schemes we, we followed our game plan to a T tonight um, I mean, we have a team to 85 points uh, besides the last quarter, you know, we did a really, really good job, <clears throat> you know, 15, 20, and 19 in the first three quarters. So, um, you know, we were just able to, you know, work as a unit, do what we were supposed to do. Uh, but I think our communication was, was, was very on point tonight, which helped us with um, a lot of our coverages um, where we usually have you know, some struggles. Um, but when we out there communicating and, and, and guys are um, – you know, listening to listen to listening to everyone and making sure that <clears throat> guys are talking, holding guys accountable on the defensive end. Um, 
you know, we did. We, we, we can play really good defense. And, you know, we kind of been struggling in, in transition and we were getting back, loading up, um, you know, making sure guys saw several bodies and not just playing one-on-one. This is a question for the group. Um, you guys had a pretty decent sample size with go, going big in the first six games. How did it feel with the way you guys started with that first group? And what, what are the things you like about about what that group was able to give you tonight? Um, you know, I think you know, getting me on the perimeter, um, another live threat uh, with DJ and Dwight. You know, uh, we're great defensively. Well, we can be great defensively. Um, with the rim protection and letting our guards um, come back and get the rebounds and, you know, and push Bron, Russ, um, and whoever the other wing is. So it's, it's some good components um, to us playing big. Um, but there's also good components of us playing you know, small when I'm at the five. So uh, we just take it game by game. And obviously there's a matchup where uh, they don't have a real <clears throat> dominant you know, post presence or a guy who's really dominant on the offensive boards. Um, so we want to look at that that small lineup when I'm at the five, um, but it, it can change game by game. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, also, question for the group. Um, you know, Rockets were competitive or, or trying to claw back in the fourth quarter. Is there any mention of of what happened earlier this week in Oklahoma during that time, or did did that need to be said? Was it just understood? Did, did that affect any way you tried to approach that last quarter of closing this out? Um, we just, I mean, we didn't score the ball. We scored 20 points. Um, we just got to do a better job of scoring. Um, and then when you play on a team like that, them guys are, you know, everyone is looking to score. And so they're going to make shots, obviously, but we got to make sure we score so we can't score 20 points in the fourth quarter. Um, and then our defense kind of slipped a little bit. Um, so, I mean, that, that was that was really it. You know, we, we do our job scoring, knowing that, you know, when the team is down, you know, they have no no conscience. They're gonna go out there and shoot the basketball. Um, and against such shots go in. So we gotta be able to to score as well. LeBron, when Melo moved past Moses, you said that he just was playing with a great flow and rhythm. And it seemed like he's done that a few times since then. What about the way he fits with you and AD and the rest of the other pieces allows him to kind of make the game easy, I'm not suggesting it's an easy game to play, but he is, seems to be just finding himself in the right spot at the right time. Um, <clears throat> as the playmakers of this team, myself, AD, and Russ, it's our job to get our guys great looks. Um, where all they have to do is catch and finish or catch and shoot. Um, try, to, try to not make them do too much, even though, you know, Melo can do a lot with the ball. Obviously, he's, you know, he's doing, working off uh, pick and rolls as well, getting to his pull-up game, but you know, when it comes to efficiency and as far as what he's doing for our team right now, we're just trying to break down the defense and he's finding himself, either his man is guarding him and is leaving him or, you know, he's in a great rhythm. So he's just just taking his shots and um, and he's knocking them down. So, you know, it's definitely big for us, especially having, uh, you know, some of our other playmakers out, having one of our, two of our snipers out as far as, the, uh, um, you know, Wayne and, and T.A. Uh, so Melo have definitely stepped it up from the perimeter, um, you know, for our perimeter shooting. Uh, LeBron, I'm sure you've sacrificed <laughs> uh, quite a bit of on the food sort of sweet standpoint, and uh, I just wondered, like, how much candy do you allot yourself on that like tonight? Can you go into the pumpkins of the kids? Uh, how does that work? No, I don't. I don't even. Uh, I don't even cross it. Uh, you know, it's probably a lot of candy in the household right now. Um, just probably for my daughter. Uh, my boys aren't candy guy, uh, candy kids. They used to be, but they. I mean. I got grown men in my house now, so um, they don't really eat a, a bunch of candy. So it's probably just my daughter, um, you know, and she she can have whatever she wants, obviously, but I'll stay away from it. Hey, LeBron, at age 36, do you sometimes surprise yourself with what you're able to do, like that backwards uh, two-handed slam dunk? And then also, like, did tonight just feel like Lakers basketball, like more fun than it's felt so far this season? Um, no, I don't surprise myself because I know how much work I put into my craft and my body and preparing myself for the game. Um, you know, so I'm able to go out and do some things that other people are still questioning how I'm able to still do. Um, but it definitely felt like Laker basketball tonight defensively um, is what Frank been preaching. 
Um, we know he's always on us about defense and protecting the rim. Um, you know, not having turnovers offensively, being efficient, sharing the ball, moving the ball, and uh, tonight was a good game for us. And uh, we hope to do it again on Tuesday. Uh, just a quick one for both of you um, of your Lakers. <clears throat> excuse me, of your Lakers teammates, who had the best costume and why yesterday? For me, the best costume, uh, I don't remember all the costumes. Uh, you had a good one. You had a, you, I think yours is good, too. That was good. I say bra. To have them on their back foot. Uh, what did you see on that side of the floor, especially? Um, I thought that we were very aggressive defensively to come out. Uh, obviously, with uh, Avery and Bays in there, um, those guys have two dynamic guards who can come out and score. Uh, a lot of points, so we just wanted to come out and just, you know, pick up the pressure a little bit, try to create turnovers, deflections, and uh, pack the paint on those guys as much as possible. And I think that uh, we did a great job. And you know, Avery and, and Bays were the uh, the catalyst of that tonight. DJ, you've spoken about the uh, the willingness to play different roles. Uh, Frank has talked about different lineups tonight. We saw uh, you with the second unit. Just wondered what those conversations are like and how that impacts, if at all, how the way that you approach the game. I think that he needed more scoring off the bench for me and Melo. So I think that's why I came out tonight, which was a great game plan, in my opinion. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, we. Um, it, it's, I, I think with a team like this, we're so um, experienced, and uh, a lot of guys are selfless at this point in their careers, and we know that we're going to have to give up a lot of things, you know, maybe shots, minutes, uh, touches, whatever it may be. Um, you know, nights you play a lot, nights you may not play at all. Uh, starting rotations, whatever it is. But, um, you know, I think that's what makes up a great team is us being able to give ourselves up for something bigger. And then last thing for you, is there any difference in the way that you are, are playing with that type of a lineup coming off the bench versus uh, when you're with the starters? Is, is it the same basic way that you play, DJ? I think it's the same way I play. I don't I, um, I don't change my – I haven't had to change my style of play up my entire career. I've been the same player, so it's it's very easy for me to, to have that small adjustment. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm in there with different guys and,